Lately there was a lot of discussion going on about a particular image taken by French photographer Nicolas Le Feudeux. But what is that all about? He won the award for the astronomy picture of the year with this image of Andromeda Galaxy at arm's length. Tilt-shift effects are common in daytime photography, either created in post-processing or with special lenses. He used a special adapter to hold the camera at an angle to have the stars at the edges out of focus. Some discussion about the awards later. But let's take a look how this effect is created in post-processing. Because I don't have his 3D printer skills. Or a 3D printer. Creating this effect is not as hard as you might think. If you want to get the maximum out of it, you of course have to do it like Nicolas. No post-processing out-of-focus effect can reach the reality of a camera lens out of focus. I'm just loading my latest image of Andromeda Galaxy. Entirely coincidental that I imaged the same thing. And don't be afraid, we won't need Pixinsight for this, because Photoshop has a built-in tool for this already. But let's talk about this image first. These are 5 hours, I think even 6 hours of integration time, with a strong light pollution filter from my backyard. The color looks okay, I think, but I know that this galaxy can be even better under dark skies, which I don't have any option getting to in these days. The noise in this image is alright and the stars have been shrinked successfully and I think I even managed to pull out some reds and some detail in the dust planes. But I think I will try to use a different filter next time, I'm eyeing the Optolong L Pro. I think it's a weaker light pollution filter and more colors will come through definitely, even though processing because of the light pollution will be harder. But let's export this image and take a look at Photoshop. I stack my images in APP because it's easy and powerful. I then move on to Pixinsight to do the real editing and afterwards I sometimes move to Photoshop to get some, some more creativity in there maybe. In the early stages of my imaging I added sometimes some spikes to these stars, to some of them, with some effects and let's use another one of these effects to gain a tilt shift. We have our image here, let's not call it background, let's call it M31 and let's go, where is it? It was filter, let's select the layer, filter, blur, not blur gallery and tilt shift. Well, it can't be any easier. Let's edit this, we need to angle it properly to match this galaxy. The center is right here. I will go for symmetric distortion, the blur can of course be adjusted. And look at this. The stars you could see in Nicolas' image were much brighter, I mean the out of focus stars at the edges, because they were integrated as such. They were brighter. No effect in post processing can achieve this properly. And that's another reason why I like his image a lot. But some things we can do, we can adjust the bokeh. We can make it more colorful and brighter, like this for example. But let's not blur out the companion galaxy too much. You of course have to adjust this to your personal preference. You can adjust the sliders more, out, more outwards. This could be an example. You could of course use a linear mask, just a gradient mask to uh, edit these out of focus stars even more, make them brighter for example. The effect is okay, I say it's 50% good, as if you would do it with a real adapter to hold the camera at an angle. It still looks quite cool, in my opinion. I will not use this effect on my future images, because I prefer the look of non-tilt shifted astro images. I want these stars everywhere, I don't want them to be in the foreground, I want them to be in the background and the object should be the thing you're looking at. But using different effects to enhance our images in post or while imaging has always been the case. And that leads us to some the thoughts about the whole discussion. People have been saying that this image can't be called astrophotography. Some people have been saying that there should be a different category. And some people say that the other images in the galaxy category are way better. While the latter is of course a matter of a personal preference, let's talk about the usage of this creativity in astrophotography. The big question, can this image be called astrophotography? We photographers have been using different tools to enhance the look of our images since the dawn of mankind. Think about this. 
Let's say a beginner would take an image with a tilt shift by mistake, because the camera was misaligned or something. That would be astrophotography, no doubt, because he did his best to create an image as close to reality as he can. But Nicolas' image does not count, because he made it bad on purpose. Furthermore, let's think about the Hubble palette. It is widely recognized as astrophotography, since it could be used for scientific research. But let's face it, no one of us YouTubers or Instagram posters uses the Hubble palette because of that. It's about the colorful, non-realistic look that makes us use more tools than we need to. Using these different tools to enhance our images in different ways, spike masks, filters, adapters, is common in this hobby. As long as the Hubble palette can be called astrophotography, Nicolas' image can as well. I will be happy to discuss this topic even more with you, but let's stay friendly in the comments. If you want more videos like this, subscribe to this channel. And as for me, my name is Tim, I'm an astro addict, I wish you clear skies and may the night be with us.